Schultz on Canada's east coast would be far from its western gas fields. But Olaf Schultz insists that Germany is doing everything it can to reduce its dependence on Russian gas. We are working hard to become independent of this gas supply and we are doing a lot of investments to make it happen and we are doing it as fast as ever possible. Never such an infrastructure has been built in Germany in that a short time. That was the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Meanwhile, European gas and power prices have surged as panic over Russian supplies gripped markets and politicians warned of a tough winter ahead. Benchmark gas settled at a record high while German power prices surged to above 700 euros a megawatt hour for the first time. This, as Moscow says, it will stop its key Nord Stream gas pipeline for three days of repairs from the 31st of August. Well, another aspect of the energy crisis. Saudi Arabia's energy minister says that OPEC and its allies may be forced to cut output as the futures market has become increasingly disconnected from fundamentals. Bloomberg's Simone Foxman has the story. Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman told Bloomberg that harmful volatility and very thin liquidity are disturbing the basic functions of the market. OPEC Plus will meet early next month to consider output targets. Benchmark crude oil futures have fallen more than 20% since early June on concern about the outlook for the global economy and the possibility of more Iranian crude coming back onto the market. In Doha, I'm Simone Foxman, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Later this morning, we'll get an update on the state of Europe's manufacturing and services sectors. The PMI surveys for August will also provide more insight into the challenges facing businesses across the euro area economy. This as they face soaring energy costs and the risk of a recession. Last month, the surveys pointed to a decline in manufacturing activity while expansion in the services sector slowed. A U.S. official says that Russia is preparing to launch intensified strikes against Ukraine's government facilities. That, as President Vladimir Putin called the car bomb that killed the daughter of ally Alexander Dugin a, quote, dastardly crime, President Vladimir Zelensky warned that Russia may do something, quote, particularly cruel as Ukraine prepares to celebrate Independence Day tomorrow. In the United States, former President Donald Trump has asked a judge for a third-party review of the documents seized from his Florida home. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has the details. Mr. Trump says he wants a neutral third party to look through the documents in legalese, a special master. So this is the same judge considering whether to make public portions of the documents seized by the FBI to look at this. Now, the New York Times says the government has recovered more than 300 documents now with classified markings. It says 150 sensitive documents recovered earlier made the DOJ want to know what Trump had taken from the White House. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Those are our top stories. Let's turn next to Bloomberg's Leanne Garrett, who's been looking at some of the things that we're watching out for later today. Good morning to you, Leanne. What have you got for us? Stephen, good morning to you. So today's events this morning will have PMIs coming in from Europe, as we've been discussing, beginning with France and Germany in the 8 a.m. hour. That will be followed by the wider Eurozone PMIs at 9, and guess what? UK PMIs at half 9, so something we'll definitely be watching out for. Then at noon, the europe focus content continues with Fabio Pignetta. Now he's speaking in a policy panel at the annual Congress of the European Economic Association that is happening in Milan in Italy at 3 p.m. after the U.S. markets open. We'll get new house sales data. This will paint a clearer picture of the state of the U.S. economy in the last month. Later tonight we'll hear from the Minneapolis Fed President, that's Neil Kashkari, as he speaks at a question and answer session at the Wharton, Minnesota alum, Alumni Club. I hope I've said that right. Do you want to no, yeah, no, no, yeah, correct, no, no, it was yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> and finally, it's a real place. It's like a real place yeah. I just wanted to clarify. And finally, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz will share a platform with the Canadian President Justin Trudeau on day two of his three-day visit. We've got some of that sound playing out today. The focus is, of course, energy, with Scholz really looking to diversify Germany's energy supply as that war in Ukraine grinds on six months coming up soon.
Yeah, Leanne Gaius, thank you so much for that look ahead then today, yeah, including the tongue twisters of <laughs> Wharton Business School. Right, let's talk about uh, one of our key interviews this morning. SoftBank-backed ride-sharing company Soka has debuted on the Korean Stock Exchange. That happened yesterday. Shares have been swinging whilst the broader Kospi index retreated. And uh, now the uh, IPO target halved ahead of the listing, but the CEO, Jake Park, says that he is still aiming to lift revenue to a trillion one per year by 2025. He's been speaking to Bloomberg exclusively. He says that the IPO is just a stepping stone. We believe that uh, like going public and using IPO proceeds uh, will will uh, create a greater value rather than just like waiting for like passively for the like market turnaround. So uh, that's the reason why we decide to like go public uh, in this like hard situation, and we believe that IPO is ju is just a stepping stone to reach to our end goal and the grand vision. So uh, we believe that um, uh, using this kind of like IPO proceed will uh, make us to like go up and uh, continue continue the growth momentum. So I think uh, like going IPO uh, would uh, lead us to the better position. Let's talk about gross momentum then. Your revenues, I think, last year, 289 million Korean won. What are your revenue projections for this current fiscal year? Um, like for the first half of this year, uh, we grew up around like 38% um, compared to the last year. And I think we can continue the growth momentum like this in the second half of the uh, of this year. So I believe that our like growth uh, will be more than 30% and uh, around the around the 40%. So I think um, we can grow uh, very quickly um, as uh, as we grew up before. And also, um, we our like profitability itself will be improved a lot uh, from this year. Uh, Jake, talk to us about your super app. Where are you with it? Will it be a game changer for the company? Yeah, um, we are preparing for our like super app strategy, and we continue to um, add on other like mobility services on our platform, and so that we can um, upsell um, to our like car sharing users. So it will make us uh, make more money and also like uh, be more profitable from this year. Uh, you've talked about how some of your proceeds will go into M&As. When do you expect to make those acquisitions? And uh, how about your expansions to markets like Southeast Asia, the U.S.? Uh, what are the plans there? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, um, we are going to use around like 60% of our IPO proceeds to um, make a strategic M&A. And we have a long list of the target companies um, which will uh, lead us to uh, build a better better mobility platform. Um, and I think like because of the market situation, uh, good companies will come out to the market at an attractive, um, attractive valuation. And that will be a um, great timing for us to um, go with them. So that was the SoCar CEO, Jake Park, speaking there. This is the ride-sharing app that IPO'd yesterday in South Korea, backed by SoftBank. So we always do take quite an interest in those businesses. Um, but actually, the share price finished 6.1% uh, lower yesterday. Oh, interesting one. Well, coming up next, we're going to be talking more about the markets, particularly with the focus on what's happening with the euro. ING, the latest to say that the euro's woes are set to worsen uh, with, after the currency fell below parity in trading on Monday uh, at the moment against the dollar. The euro trading at 99.18, uh, so well below that parity level that it fell below in July. And for the moment, the, the tendency seems to be negative. We'll be discussing that with Kieran Ganesh from UBS coming up next, as, long as, as well as, of course, all of the sentiment we are seeing across markets. We are seeing, uh, as we're waiting for European bond trading to start after that a huge uh, slump in bonds yesterday. Uh, we more on that coming up with Kieran Ganesh. This is been very when news breaks across the globe, Bloomberg Radio is there. From Asia, Taiwan has reiterated its vow not to bow to China's pressures to Europe. Yes, another problem in Europe's worst energy crisis in decades. And anywhere in the world, news happens. We're going to go live to Taipei. Bloomberg's Bruce Einhorn in Hong Kong. The latest on the ground in Kiev. Bloomberg's Tommaso Ebhardt is more from Milan. Joining us now, Maria Tadeo in Madrid. Bloomberg 99.1. On the ground. Everywhere. 
Returning to London on September 28th, the Bloomberg Technology Summit will bring together Europe's top business leaders, innovators and investors to discuss the strategies fostering growth and innovation. In a world grappling with social, economic and political transformation, how can unprecedented digitization help companies thrive in this new environment? Speakers include executives from Copper, Darktrace and DST Global. Learn more at BloombergLive.com slash TechLondon2022. This is Ben Stiller, Goodwill Ambassador for UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency. Your help is needed now. Vulnerable people are being forced to flee Ukraine and in emergencies around the world. They need emergency shelter. They need blankets and basic relief items. Please go online to unrefugees.org slash Ukraine assistance to give what you can today. Families are scared and need life-saving support. Please give what you can to help people in need. Just go online to unrefugees.org slash Ukraine assistance. As the former head of aerospace giant Boeing's internal training program, Norma Clayton is a longtime champion for advanced manufacturing. That's why she's a major supporter of NJIT and the university's drive to develop leading-edge skills and technologies demanded by industry. The technology curve as we know it today is about every six months. And so for a university like NJIT, they have to stay on the cutting edge. And one of the things that they have launched is this makerspace, a simulated operational environment of what the student is going to experience when they leave the classroom and go to work in industry. They work on projects that include problems that come directly from corporations. I was talking to one of the instructors there and he said, so what do you think? I said, I feel like I'm in the factory of the future. And that's what you want. You want students to see that this is exactly what you're going to be doing when you leave here. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption. So while America rebuilds, BAM has you covered. BAM. Build America Mutual. Talk to your investment advisor or visit buildamerica.com. I'm Tiffany Haddish And I'm Marlon Wayans African Americans are three times more likely to be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer than any other racial or ethnic group When you or someone you love is facing a pancreatic cancer diagnosis Access to cutting edge treatment can help make long term survival possible And improve future patient outcomes that's why Stand Up to Cancer and the Lust Garden Foundation have teamed up to bring over 30 pancreatic cancer clinical trials to those who need them. Learning all you can about pancreatic cancer, including treatment options and what clinical trials are available, can give you or a loved one even more than hope. It can help make long-term survival possible. For more information about the latest pancreatic cancer research and clinical trials near you, visit pancreaticcancercollective.org. This is Karen Moscow. And I'm Nathan Hager. Join us today at 5 a.m. on Bloomberg Daybreak. We continue to focus on the Fed with the Jackson Hole Symposium just days away with Drew Mattis of MetLife. I'm Amy Morris. Schools reopen their doors with fewer teachers and staff. And we'll preview primary races in New York and Florida with Bloomberg's Joe Matthew. That's all coming up on Bloomberg Daybreak today at 5 a.m. on Bloomberg 99.1 and 105.7 FM HD2. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Francine Lacroix and Tom McKenzie. Back with us, uh, Sid Wek, Chief Investment Officer of Flowback. As to how much uh, do policymakers in China need to do to actually get it right, and what does it mean for investors? Well, there, there's a lot more work that needs to be done to, to boost growth. We know that the stimulus measures they've done have been small. We know they don't want to do any kind of stimulus like the U.S. or Europe did during COVID or even during 2008. Uh, they're very worried about the consequences. The problem is really at the moment the property market. Other areas are okay, but that demand isn't picking up. And the COVID restrictions are really weighing on sentiment. People don't know if and when they're going to be locked down again. They don't feel like going out and shopping as much or buying. Uh, so I think we're going to need much more support uh, from policymakers to boost that sentiment for, for growth. Esti, what does that mean for your exposure to China at this point? We are still a little bit 
cautious. We think that as long as you don't have mass lockdowns like the Shanghai one, especially in key cities uh, like the spring, that's one factor we absolutely need. And as long as we don't see a renewed regulatory crackdown on big tech, that's another support. So I think the worst of both of those is behind us. Hear more conversations like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app. Or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business App and the Bloomberg Quick Take. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg's European headquarters in the city of London, I'm Max Ramsey with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. We saw steep losses for global stocks yesterday. That continues in the Asian session. The MSCI Asia Pacific down 1%. The CSI 300 down 0.6 of 8%. The Hang Seng down 0.8%. The topics in Japan as we head towards the close, they're down 1%. European futures, we dip slightly. Euro stocks, 50 futures down 0.2%. For 200 futures down 3 tenths of 8%. DAX futures is down a tenth of a percent. The FTSE, the outlier yesterday, falling only two tenths of a percent, whereas we had a 2.3 percent fall for the DAX. A similar picture in terms of the US S&P 500 E-mini futures and Nasdaq futures both dip a t- uh, tenth of a percent. That is in the context of a 2.1 percent fall for the S&P 500 yesterday, the biggest fall in two months. The dollar holding steady on the Bloomberg dollar spot index. We are at the lowest since 2002 for the euro, slightly weaker than parity. Again, the dollar 99 cents to the euro we've got a big move higher for yields yesterday we hold on to that just uh moving down one basis point the u.s 10-year yield three percent the yield there and oil we have gains again today brent crude 97 dollars 14 per barrel up seven tenths of eight percent that's your bloomberg business flash now let's get more of the top news headlines with leanne garens morning to leanne oh max it's so lovely to have you in the studio good morning to you too max rams is there now justin trudeau says canada would be willing to consider easing the regulatory burden on new gas export facilities to Europe, but warns the business case must be made first. Speaking at a press conference with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, the Canadian Prime Minister said the challenge is that any new gas terminals on Canada's eastern shore would be far from its western gas fields. Now, Saudi Arabia's energy minister says OPEC and its allies may be forced to cut output as the futures market has become increasingly disconnected from fundamentals. Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman told Bloomberg harmful volatility is disturbing the basic functions of the market. OPEC Plus meets next month to consider its production targets. And CEOs do not want to reveal their pay to anyone, not their friends or even their close colleagues at work that they trust. While younger workers are more willing to share their salary information, C-suite and other top-level managers are more inclined to keep it all a secret. Now, this is according to a new report. The data is according to a LinkedIn survey of nearly 19,000 US-based business professionals polled in June and July. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Bloomberg Quick Take, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Stephen. I wonder how different that would be if that survey was carried out with with similar level people in Europe. Because I do think there's, I, I'm, I'm intrigued to see that the, even the US CEOs are more rational of it. My impression always is there's more conversation had about pay more openly in the US than there is elsewhere. Think? Yeah. I'm not convinced of that actually um, but I think the other factor this was such an interesting survey mm. was age it was about you know the younger you were the more open mm. you were to actually revealing your salary I, yeah I think it's absolutely fascinating that people don't even tell their closest friends well what I thought was fascinating is you know we've had this massive change haven't we publicly traded companies have to disclose yes. they've seen mm. executives pay now don't they but that hasn't, but it's made, it, yeah. it hasn't yeah. made it a more open 
open conversation because obviously the private sector doesn't have to so are we kind of in a weird place but I also think the younger generation are way more keen to talk about not only how much they paid but who they also vote for in an election when I think of the older generation they still keep that all under wraps mm, I don't know I'm looking forward to thanks to dinner party Caroline's house where we all sit around to talk about our <laughs> salaries because apparently that's what happens if you're advised well, be but, warned but look there is a big argument kind yeah. of in as feminist thinking certainly yes. about the idea that obviously for equal pay you have to have some conversations yeah, about what people are, yeah. are earning anyway really interesting thank you so much Leanne Gerrans with our top stories and there you go food for thought this time of the morning on pay yeah, it certainly is okay well let's get back to the markets then we had that twin sell off on stocks and bonds yesterday the pound and the euro slumping on fears of higher fed rate hikes but how much are our recession fears really being priced in by markets at this stage joining us now is Kieran Ganesh multi-asset strategist at UBS Global Wealth Management good morning to you Kieran. thank you for being with us on Bloomberg Radio if we start then with the currency moves how much further do you think that the euro and sterling could weaken given that we are looking at this extremely strong dollar yeah, we don't think that this is the bottom of the euro or the pound um, just yet. I think there's another few percentage points to, to go. And because the fact is that uh, even if the Fed uh, is appearing to be getting a bit more dovish, then they are still going to be hiking interest rates more quickly um, than the European Central Bank and the Bank of England. And currencies are a relative game. And particularly when we get to the energy crisis in Europe, uh, the dollar just looks like it's in a better position right now. So we're expecting to see another few percentage points of uh, appreciation for the dollar against both the euro and the pound, and we're targeting 95 cents on the euro, and we're targeting 115 on the pound. Okay, um, yeah, well, that would be uh, a pretty soft uh, currencies. What changes the equation? Do you think that further rate hikes on the ECB or the Bank of England could actually uh, return some strength to those currencies? It doesn't seem to have done so far. Yeah, well, I think it's really going to be two things. I think the first is when do we see uh, signs that inflation in the U.S. has eased sufficiently that the Fed really starts to talk actively about pivoting, potentially even cutting rates. I um, think that could take some of the heat out of the U.S. dollar. And then on the European side, it's it's still very, very unclear how Europe's going to deal with the uh, energy crisis this winter with the surging prices. And we really think you need to see a resolution to that before investors feel confident enough to put money to work in the Eurozone. So I think it's a combination of those two factors before we really see a sustained turn in, in Euro dollar. Do, uh, do you have any, any optimism from this move by Canada to potentially ease the way for more LNG exports, would that be one of the factors that could perhaps help to ease the supply crunch here in Europe? It, it will take time to come through, and, and I think that's that's where the, the challenge is. I think if we can get to a point where and there's a clear plan in place, both in the short term and the longer term, um, then I think investors will feel more confident about um, Europe, and it, it feels like at the moment they're still working out both the short term and the long term plan um, with uh, some of these trips to different uh, different countries and trying to fill up the storage tanks. But until that's clear, the euro is likely to remain weak. Um, in terms of Jackson Hole, which we're looking ahead to uh, the big speech by Jerome Powell on Friday, what are your expectations now? Yeah, so the Fed is likely to continue to cold, pour cold water over this pivot story, which was obviously pervading the markets over the past few weeks and driving a lot of the rally. Um, I think the, the Fed is going to be very keen to maintain its credibility on inflation targeting, and so we think it's going to be a continued hawkish message um, from the Fed, you know, stating that they'll be increasing interest rates further and uh, cutting the size of the balance sheet until inflation is more demonstrably under control. So, you know, really, I think. Uh, a message from the Fed of retaining credibility in their hawkish stance on inflation. How high do you see Fed rates going at this stage? Yeah, well, I mean, if it, they're likely to top out in the three to four percent range. I think you know precisely where in that range. Uh, I think is it, uncertain. I think if we look at history, and the Fed had had to go further to increase uh, to increase interest rates to try and tame inflation, and the perhaps investors have uh, priced today and have priced in the past. So you know, it could be towards the top end of their expectations. But you know, the market is currently pricing that they'll be you know, topping out at around three before uh, cutting back. Um, but uh, I think somewhere in that range is most likely. Gilt yields jumped here in the UK again on Monday. What does it tell us about the market's view of the UK economy? Uh, they're very unsure about it, I think, in, in, in short. Uh, you know, clearly, growth is, is weakening. Bank of England forecasting five quarters of recession. At the same time, inflation. 
inflation is rising and that forecast now the 18% um, inflation rates for the UK um, in the first quarter of next year um, and I think the market is not convinced that the Bank of England knows what the right direction to go in is with those two forces that would pull you in two different directions so I think the uh, default reaction is to be you know, selling the pound and selling uh, UK government bonds and that's why we're seeing this you know, combined uh, sell-off in, in, in both gilt and the pound I mean, the, the bright spot in the UK, at least, is the equity market has got uh, sufficient overseas exposure that the earnings have actually been holding up quite well, and especially in paying terms. So that's actually one of our preferred equity markets at the moment. But the uh, UK on the fixed income and currency side um, does look like a troubled market at the moment. What else are you buying amid this sell-off? Yes, yeah, so it's a combination of, of defensives and, and bad you really. So we think uh, areas like uh, healthcare, quality income, uh, that looks relatively well insulated from uh, you know, any economic downturn to come. So you know, those are parts of the equity market which we like um, at the moment. Um, and then on the uh, commodity side, we, we think that things 